A farmer would not develop a crop, grow a crop that she couldn't sell. Similarly, it doesn't make sense to develop a hydropower if you've got no market to sell it to. What are some of the markets hydropower electricity, clean renewable hydropower electricity can be sold? You're right, power markets are essential to making a development feasible. In the West, it's most common to sell your electricity to a utility, although another large electricity user could theoretically buy it through a wheeling fee with a utility. It's going to be most likely that it's sold to an investor-owned utility, maybe a rural electric co-op, or maybe a municipality. I see. So can you explain a little more about wheeling power? Sure. So wheeling power, electricity from a small hydro plant is generated in one spot, but there might be a user a great distance away that's interested in buying that clean renewable energy. A utility as an intermediary may pay to wheel that electricity to another utility or another large power user. And a utility is going to charge for that fee, so that's often called a wheeling fee. Sort of like a tollway to use their transmission lines? Absolutely, absolutely. A tollway to use their lines if there's space available on those lines. So in small hydro applications, who's actually using electricity? Now with a small hydro system, and remember we classify small hydro, it's small in the world of hydro, but it's quite large by most people's standards. A small hydro system is designed to generate electricity to sell as revenue. If we're looking to offset our own consumption, it often falls into the class of micro hydro. It varies by definition, but that's often less than 100 kilowatts worth of capacity. And there, a platform such as net metering can be utilized to allow someone to use their own electricity. I hear a lot about net metering and I don't understand what it is. Can you describe that a little? Net metering is a policy passed by the state legislature. And it's designed to allow folks that have a renewable energy system typically for their own, to offset their own consumption. In Wyoming that would be less than 25 kilowatts. To safely interconnect to the grid and to make it easy and relatively expedited to work with that utility. That 25 kilowatt threshold is actually quite important. If you get above that 25 kilowatt threshold in Wyoming, you enter a whole new realm of having to acquire a power purchase agreement where the utility does not necessarily have to interconnect you or offer that incentive to offset their retail rate. So 25 kilowatts is an important threshold when it comes to designing a micro hydro or small hydro power plant. So what happens if my facility is greater than 25 kilowatts? With systems above 25 kilowatts, you're designing a system to sell electricity to the market, not just to offset your own consumption your own consumption at a residence, a pumping station, or something like that. And when you begin to sell electricity in the market, it gets much more complex. You enter the realm of a power purchase agreement, where you're producing a product at an agreed price and supplying it generally to a utility. And to do that, you acquire a power purchase agreement, often called a PPA. Is it complicated to get a PPA? It's involved. We won't say complicated, but it is a negotiation. You have somebody selling a product and somebody buying a product. A utility generally wants to get it at the lowest price they can offer, while as a seller generally wants to get the highest price they can offer. So there's a specific process in that negotiation. And it's not just the energy that you're providing, it's when you're providing the energy, how reliable it is, where that energy is located, who the ultimate customer is, even who owns the renewable energy attributes of that can impact how that power purchase agreement is designed. And with that power purchase agreement, you're the engineer, you know that these projects technically, I'm not saying they're easy, but we understand how to do that. I mean, a power purchase agreement is sort of the crux of this matter. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's exactly what I've found out too. The, the technical side, once it's deemed feasible, the technical side, the design side of putting a turbine in and in a, in a conduit is the easy part. The hard part really, and the most time consuming, is negotiating with the utility on, on the power purchase agreement. And you understand why that is. It isn't necessarily that the utilities are bad folks. It's just that they have a different clientele that they're serving. And this is a market that oftentimes a small hydro power producer hasn't entered before. So it, there's a learning curve on this. Yeah, that's right. And utilities are also highly regulated from public service commissions as well, which regulates what they do with that electricity. So regulated or deregulated utilities are going to go through a somewhat similar process. Yeah. In addition to the power purchase agreement, is there any other requirements the utility is going to have you go through? Yeah, it isn't just the right to sell that electricity and when to sell that electricity. You also have to be able to safely connect to a system to deliver that electricity. And that's where you get into interconnection. And interconnection is just what it sounds like, the right to take your electricity generating facility and interconnect to a transmission distribution system. 
Oftentimes an interconnection study will be required because just because a line is present does not mean that there's space on that line, does not mean that it's adequately sized to deliver the amount of electricity that you're going to generate. So interconnection is a very important part of being able to deliver your product to market. Oftentimes it'll go hand in hand with acquiring that power purchase agreement because they have to know that the electricity you're generating can get to where it's needed. Who, who typically does the interconnection studies? The interconnection studies are often done by the utility. Sometimes it can be done by a third party contractor. And what they're determining is, can that electricity that's being generated there be safely delivered to the ultimate customer? Is that gonna cost me to do that? Like many things in this life, it's not free. So there certainly is a cost with that. It's something that should be built in the development plan for any small hydro facility. So it sounds like there's a lot of complexity uh, in cost and interconnection studies. Is there any value to it? There is value to the electricity produced at these small hydro facilities. And actually that value is beyond typical electricity generating plants. There's renewable energy attributes, often called renewable energy credits, that can come with this type of generation. Those have value in a marketplace. And if we want to think about what a renewable energy credit is, if you've got an electron coming out of a small hydro plant or a coal-fired facility or a nuclear power plant, it doesn't matter. That electricity, when it's delivered to the ultimate customer, will do the same amount of work. But the one that came out of that hydro plant is wearing a green hat. And you can take that green hat off and sell it to somebody who wants to support renewable energy. It could be for environmental, social, uh, even marketing reasons. Now those renewable energy credits aren't necessarily owned by the facility that generates them. The power purchase agreement could dictate that those renewable energy credits go to the utility. But in some cases, a small hydro producer would have renewable energy credits that they could sell into the market and have a small stream of revenue in addition to the electricity that they produce. If somebody were to purchase these renewable energy credits, do they have to be located in the same state that it's generated? Oftentimes, renewable energy credits can be purchased across the country. Now, in different states, there's different incentive structures to what the value of renewable energy is. And sometimes the utility and other local state-based customers want to acquire them, but that's not necessary. It could be in California, it could be in Connecticut. It's simply people want to support renewable energy projects and value that clean energy. Now in the power market, we understand there's a lot of reasons to like the clean renewable energy generated by small hydro facilities, especially the ones that exist in water projects where you've already got working water, you're just asking water to do a bit more work. But even if it's technically feasible, even if it's right next to a transmission or distribution line, that the power purchase agreement and the power market are going to be one of the primary factors that dictate if this is a viable opportunity. So it sounds like the, the feasibility and the technical side of the project is important, but also the market and where you're going to sell the power to is just as important. Of course, you've got to have a resource that is practical to develop, but if you can't sell it in the market, it really doesn't matter. Sometimes that's when you just want to watch the water flow by.